separation begins with what we call the call to adventure. Campbell tells us there's literally almost a phone ringing. It's like the universe, the divine God, whatever you want to call it, literally dialing you up and ringing and giving you a call, asking you to step out and to live your journey. Something breaks into your quotidian reality and makes it impossible for you to, to continue. Well, you can hang up the phone, you can run away, but it'll keep coming back, it'll keep coming back until you finally answer the call. If you're not paying attention, the wake-up calls come in the form of a sledgehammer. You know, if you're paying attention, they might come in a tickle feather. So we don't always get the call as a choir of angels with trumpets singing to us beautifully one sunny morning. In Star Wars, Luke comes back, his house has been burnt down. He's got to go. Oftentimes it comes in the depth of our despair, in a, losing a job, getting fired, getting divorced, having your house foreclosed on. These things that you just would never want to have happen are often the exact things we need to catapult us, to catalyze us into the next, that next version of ourselves. Bad things happen to good people. And when that happens to them, they typically are thrown for a loop. Um, because they frequently have felt everything's going along, I'm doing everything right, what happened? Well, you know, the universe just upended you, and it does do that. Chinese symbol for crisis are two symbols. The first one is danger, and the second one immediately is opportunity. So crisis is both danger and opportunity. This idea that if one storyline collapses, that that's the end of the movie is not true of human life and never was true of human life. I know people who've prospered in the most extraordinary way in the worst type of adversity. It's actually revealed something to them about themselves they didn't know, and that became the new journey they took. Let me put this into really practical 100-pound terms, because if the camera had been pointed at me when I was 24 years old, what it would have seen was a person who weighed 320 pounds. You would have seen me puffing on two or three packs of Marlboros a day, a relationship that I didn't want to be in, and I had a job I hated. Everything was wrong in my life. And so those are ripe moments for a wake-up call in life. You know, if you haven't been paying attention enough so that you end up with a job you hate, a relationship you don't want to be in, a body you don't like, and you're addicted to a bunch of things, you're ripe for a sledgehammer blow from the universe, and I got it. You step over a threshold, meaning you move from one world into another. Sometimes you're shoved from one world into the other. I went out for a walk, and I stepped on the ice uh, on the road, and my feet shot out from under me, and I smacked my back of my head on the ground, frozen ground, and it knocked me out just enough. I wasn't completely unconscious, but I had a vision while I was semi-knocked out. I could see down through all the layers of myself to this pure consciousness inside. And I could see how all the fat I had was organized around a whole bunch of feelings I didn't want to let myself feel, like sadness from childhood and a lot of old grief in my family and anger and things like that. And I realized that the fat was there to keep me from feeling those feelings. And so as I began to come back to normal consciousness, I made a vow that I was going to change my life so that I could live in that state of pure consciousness instead of having to have all of that armor around me. Once you make the decisions that Joseph Campbell is talking about, about really hearing the call and being willing to take on the challenges of that new awakened life, once you do that, you begin to feel a power that it's like nothing else I've ever experienced. And I think a lot of us are just plain old afraid of that. 